floods, hurricanes, wildfires and other natural disasters happening more and more frequently in the last few years, climate change is not a joke and we all know it. As a tea company, and also because we personally drink a lot of tea, we asked ourselves how carbon efficient tea drinking actually is, and whether there are any tweaks to our tea drinking habits that we could implement to help us decrease our carbon footprint on a daily basis. As a nation, UK drinks a lot of tea. The UK Tea and Infusions Association estimates that on average, we drink about 100 million cups of tea every single day, which is almost 36 billion cups per year. To find out the carbon footprint of drinking tea, we first need to divide it up into its individual components. For that, we'd like to refer to Mike Berners-Lee and his book, How Bad Are Bananas? Quick side note, Mike is the brother of Tim Berners-Lee, the guy who invented the internet. What an impressive family. Mike divides the carbon footprint of hot drinks into farming and processing, packing and retail, making drink, and choice of milk or no milk. The farming and processing of tea is already pretty carbon efficient. Particularly high quality loose leaf tea is mostly still picked and processed entirely by hand. Overall, the good news is that tea is way more carbon efficient than say a latte or hot chocolate. If you look at the graph, you'll see why. Yep, milk is the bad guy here. Cow's milk is unsurprisingly pretty bad for our environment. Also, you know how tea contains loads of antioxidants that fight those really bad free radicals that cause damage to the cells in your body? Well, according to the European Heart Journal, milk's protein mute the antioxidants and offset the health benefits of the tea. So here we go. So tip number one for carbon efficient tea brewing is to use plant milk or no milk at all. If you find it hard to abandon milk, we highly recommend trying high quality loose leaf tea as it's really flavorsome and doesn't have any bitterness. So it tastes amazing without milk. Hence, tip number two, choose high quality loose leaf tea. Next, let's talk about packaging. Choose tea bags, that adds an extra 5% of emissions to the carbon footprint of your cup of tea. This additional manufacturing step can also lead to tea needing to be transported to and from tea bagging facilities on top of the mechanical step of filling and sealing. If you end up consuming your beverage in a disposable takeaway cup, you can add another completely unnecessary 110 gram of carbon onto your list. So tip number three is, invest in a reusable cup. Now let's talk about what Mike Berners-Lee refers to as making drink, which for tea basically translates to brewing your kettle. It needs to be said that kettles use up a lot of energy. Following the 1990s World Cup semi-final between England and West Germany, over 26 million people finished watching the game and many decided to put their kettles on simultaneously. The result was the biggest single moment of electricity usage in UK history, topping out at 2,800 megawatt of power. The phenomenon, known to electric companies as TV pickups, demonstrates how our collective actions make a big difference to energy usage. It's important to mention that electric kettles are still more carbon efficient than alternative water boiling methods. However, some kettles are more energy efficient than others. We don't suggest you should rush out and buy a new kettle, but if you consider buying a new one, check out the energy efficiency score. Speaking of energy, saveonenergy.com recently carried out a survey on tea drinking and found out that the majority of us Brits forget about our freshly boiled kettles twice a day. Hence, tip number four is don't forget about your boiled kettle. And here's the last and my personal favorite tip on how to brew tea more carbon efficiently. If you don't remember anything else from this video, remember this one because it's super easy to implement, it doesn't affect your tea drinking experience and it helps you save money on energy bills. The tip is to fill your vessel first and then the kettle. See, when we don't know exactly how much water we need, we are bound to overfill that kettle because the last thing you wanna do is have to boil the kettle again because you didn't have enough water in the first place. However, by filling your cup first or your teapot first, you know you'll have enough. 
the brewing time is much quicker and it uses up less energy. I've been doing this for the last few weeks and I'm telling you this is such an easy change to implement. It's good for the environment and it's good for your wallet. We've actually measured the energy consumption with our own kettle at home and here are the results. To brew one cup of tea, it took one minute and seven seconds and used up 0.04 kilowatt hours. And to brew a full kettle, it took five minutes, 32 seconds and used up 0.201 kilowatt hours. So to recap, to become a more carbon efficient tea drinker, you should number one, renounce milk or at least replace by plant milk. Number two, choose high quality loose leaf tea. Number three, when outdoors, bring a reusable cup along. Number four, don't forget your boiled kettle. And my personal favorite, number five, fill your vessel, then your kettle. We hope you found those tips helpful. Let us know in the comments how carbon efficient you are and also if you have any other tips that can help us become more carbon efficient in our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you.